Introduce the speaker, Vince. I'm doing it now. Okay. Okay. Our speaker is Dave. Where, where is Dave? Dave Roche. He's one of our members, and he'll be speaking tonight on this recycling, particularly on how what items should be recycled and and following the rules of the Somerset County system. Dave, it's all yours. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Bruce, I am going to share my screen. Okay, we're ready to go. Um, I'd like to thank Vince for asking me to do this program. Um, I, I believe he asked me back in September and I've been working on this program ever since. Um, I have no background in waste management or recycling. My interest is purely um, based on my uh, experience doing nature photography and, and what, uh, what got me inspired to, to you know, start thinking about ways I can help uh, improve our conditions in our environment. I started uh, photographing in the year 2000 and in 2005, I took my first trip to Africa and I went with a gentleman by the name of Boyd Norton. And Boyd is a, uh, a former physicist turned nature photographer. And he's one of the premier nature photographers in the United States and also a very um, influential uh, activist in conservation. Um, so spending a week in Africa with him uh, really opened my eyes to a lot of things. And since then I've been uh, <clears throat> doing my best to try to help improve conditions in our environment. I joined the uh, Cranford Environmental Commission. I was a member there for eight years before I joined where I moved here to Canal Walk. So uh, my background is really sales and marketing in the advertising industry. Um, so I, I'm gonna have a lot of data here, a lot of uh, studies and, and, and numbers to share with you tonight. And I did my best to try to do multiple um, validation of, uh, of, of the statistics that I was finding. I didn't wanna go, go to one website and take one company's or one organization's word for it. I tried to uh, validate a lot of the information. So um, I have a lot of source, sources for my information. Um, and um, if you wanna get a copy of this presentation after it's over, um, I do have a website for my photography. And on that website, I have an events page, which is a list of all my uh, speaking engagements. And at the top, you'll see plastics in nature. And if you click on presentation, you can get a copy of our of the deck here that I'm going to be going through. All right, so plastics in nature, how did we get here? And tonight I'm going to specifically talk about single use plastics. Um, there's no doubt that plastic is a, a, a kind of a miraculous invention. And the benefits are, are endless. I mean, from using plastics to uh, lighten the weight of cars to uh, uh, making medical equipment, I mean, the, the uses are fantastic. Um, however, um, we did kind of go down the road, in my opinion, with the single use plastic uh, uh, trend. Um, so let's, let's get started. I think this gentleman will give us a good f feel for where I we started. I think it's your future. You're alive. Well, that's a little hard to say. Ben. Excuse me. Mr. McGuire. Ben. Mr. McGuire. Come with me for a minute. I want to talk to you. Excuse us, Joanne. Of course. Thank you. I just want to say one word to you. Just one word. Yes, sir. Are you listening? Yes, I am. Plastics. Exactly. How do you mean? There's a great future in plastics. Think about it. Will you think about it? Yes, I will. I've sure. said. That's a deal. Okay, hopefully, hopefully everybody heard that. Um, so as you can see, um, 1967 is when the graduate was made. And uh, Mr. McGuire was right on when he said there's a future in plastics. You can see that the growth of plastics worldwide um, just skyrocketed starting in around 2002. Um, and from then over the next five years, from 2021, they expect a single use plastic packaging market to uh, expand by additional 4.2%. So how did we get here? Well, back in 1955, uh, Life Magazine had a two-page article on throwaway living. Uh, it, celebrated, it celebrated products' ability to cut down on household chores. 
I can remember watching TV commercials when I was a young boy and seeing the happy housewife in the kitchen dressed in her finest dress and walking around in high heels because she didn't have a lot of work to do because of all the conveniences that were being marketed uh, back in those days and continue to be marketed today. Um, we threw all the, our garbage in, away, and including paper plates and plastic spoons and so forth. And they would take them out to the curb and they would magically disappear as these gentlemen would pick them, pick all that garbage up and throw it in their truck. It was out of sight. It was out of mind. We never thought about that garbage again. And all that garbage ended up going to landfills. And back in the old days, landfills were kind of primitive. You know, kind of a hole in the ground and they threw everything in there and then covered it up. In New Jersey, there are 578 landfills. Only 12 of those landfills are still in operation. That tells me that in New Jersey, we're running out of places to put landfills. The modern sanitary landfills are a very complex structure and they must be sited in areas with, with safe hydrogeological features. So you can't put them near swamps, you can't put them near the ocean. You can't put them near rivers. You can't put them near fault lines. Um, there's specific areas and requirements for landfills today, which makes it more difficult to find places to put all our trash. So why should we stop living in a throwaway culture? Well, again, we're going to talk about single-use plastics. Um, to me, that is the biggest threat to our environment. Over 300 million tons of plastic are produced every year, half of which are single-use items such as plastic bags, packaging, bottles, wrappers, straws. And this plastic takes forever to deteriorate. You know, your plastic bags take 20 years. If you're using those K-cups with your uh, curing uh, coffee maker, those K-cups take 500 years to decompose. And you'll see further on that plastic never really decomposes. So how are we doing as a country? Well, we like to use plastic. We're number two in the world using 117 pounds per person a year. Australia is the only one who's ahead of us on that one. So we're using all this plastic and we're creating all this waste. So how are we doing on recycling? Well, for municipal solid waste recycling rates worldwide in 2019, the United States was near the bottom recycling only 34% of recyclable uh, material. This includes paper, glass, aluminum, and plastics. So where does all that plastic go? Well, I hate to break it to you, but not all of it goes to recycling. So when you put your recycling material out on the curb, there's a good chance that must, some of that will end up in a landfill and some of it will end up being burnt for, to generate energy. Combustion for uh, plastics emits toxic fumes. So even though we're reusing those plastics to create energy, we're polluting the air in doing so. So let's take a closer look at the type of plastics that we have. We all look at the bottom of a plastic bottle or a plastic container, and we look for that little triangle with a number in it. And I know early on, when I saw that triangle, I just threw it in recycling. I didn't even think twice about it. But it had a triangle. It had to be recyclable. The fact is, only number one and number two have a wide uh, acceptance in the marketplace. The type of plastic makes them easier to reproduce into other products. Number five is moderately accepted. But plastics number three, four, six, and seven have very little value in the marketplace. They're very, very difficult to recycle. So some accept count accepts all plastic bottles and containers one through seven. That's what their documentation says. So is that true or is that false? It's sort of true, but there are exceptions. And here's a list of them, I won't go through them, but I do wanna highlight a couple of things. Number one, do not put your plastic bags, don't put bo plastic bottles in a plastic bag and then put it out for recycling. The plastic bags can cause problems with the recycling uh, machinery that's used down the, down, the, down the road. Plastic flower pots, they have a number five on the bottom. And I used to, I used to put those in the recycling all the time because I saw the number five. 
But in fact, in Somerset County, those are not recyclable. Styrofoam, also known as polystyrene, probably one of the worst products ever created. Um, if you look at the bottom of a lot of these uh, styro the styrofoam packaging, you might see a number six or a number seven, but they are not recyclable and they have to go in the trash. Um, plastic caps, of course, we all know what plastic caps are not, are not have to be removed from bottles in, in Somerset County. And thankfully the men's club was, was, uh, was right there when I came in with my idea to, to recycle them. And thanks to Alan, we're, we're doing a great job doing that. The other thing I notice in recycling containers all the time are prescription bottles and they are not recyclable. Okay, so quickly, what's recycling? Recycling is the process of collecting and processing materials and remanufacturing them into new products. Sounds easy. Take all our trash, make new products out of them. And it's a great concept, but it depends on successful, uh, su successfully recycling pr uh, programs, depend on an infrastructure to support it and a market for the material that we're creating during recycling. According to the EPA, America's recycling infrastructure has not kept pace with today's waste stream. So what happens to all that plastic? Well, developed countries have been shipping mixed plastics to countries that had little or no infrastructure to recycle the material. Good example is China. We used to send billions of pounds. In 2015, we shipped to 4.5 billion pounds of plastic to China. Why they agreed to accept it, I have no idea. Maybe they thought they had the capacity to recycle the material, but soon it wasn't long, a couple of years later before they decided this was a big mistake on their part. So in 2017, they introduced restrictions leading to the decrease in US exports to China. In 2020, we only exported 1.37 billion pounds of plastics. Now keep in mind, going down in numbers we're shipping out, uh, the United States is increasing the use of single-use pl plastics. We send some plastics to Malaysia and Indonesia. They don't have the infrastructure to recycle it. So what they do with it, they put it in dumps, not the type of dumps we have in the United States where we have layers and all kinds of ventilation to, to take the uh, methane gas out and to make sure there's no leakage into the environment. They have open pit uh, landfills and that's where this, all this plastic is going there. In 2019, Malaysia said enough is enough. And they sent 60 containers of waste back to the countries of origin. So we're at a point now where all these other countries that we were trying to dump our trash on onto are no longer taking it. So now it's our problem to solve. So how is this all this plastic impacting the natural world? Well, you probably heard of the great garbage patch. Um, it's been on the news, it's been in a lot of different programs and a lot of this plastic gets into the ocean a number of ways, but because of the currents, uh, which are called uh, gyres, they circulate and move the plastics and the plastics accumulate in certain areas of the ocean based on the currents that are, are managing their motion. So it's a big problem in the Pacific, but what about the Atlantic right next, right off our shores? Well, there are actually five gyres in the, in the world and one of them is the Atlantic Ocean. And in 2010, a billion bits of plastic were found congregating off the North America's Atlantic coast according to National Geographic's. Much of the debris is composed of microplastics. So what are microplastics? Well, microplastics are include any plastic fragment of particles that are already five millimeters in size or less before entering the environment. And these include microfibers from clothing, microbeads and plastic pellets, all used to create different types of products, including cosmetics. They also arise when the breakdown of larger plastic products through natural weathering processes after entering the environment. So all that plastic you see floating in the ocean uh, eventually is gonna break down and then end up being microplastics. 
So as the reality is plastics never disappear. They just get smaller. The data gathered by scientists from the, uh, the Kyushu University in Japan found 24.4 trillion pieces of microplastics in the world's ocean between 2000 and 2019. The microplastics have been found in fish and other marine animals. A recent MacArthur Foundation study estimates that 25th, by 2050, the volume of plastic waste accumulated in the oceans will be greater than the volume of fish. So how did the plastics get in the ocean in the first place? Well, they leak, in a, there's a number of areas where they leak. They leak during collection. They can leak during transportation. The, we still use barges to transport plastics um, down rivers. Um, and then in solid waste facilities, a lot of these solid waste facilities are, you know, some of them are enclosed by buildings, but some are on open land. And I've never seen a, uh, a plastic water bottle that could stand up to a 15 or 20 mile an hour wind gust. So these things can be blowing all over the place and end up in, a, in the environment. Wind and storm water, you have a flood, you have a heavy rain. If anything is in the street or on the sidewalk, that can get washed into the, the, um, the drain basins along the streets and end up at our rivers. Marine, activ marine activity is also a, a, an issue. We do have an act to prevent pollution from ships, which applies to US and non-US commercial vessels operating in US waters. But with 50,000 plus active registered ships, that international treaty is difficult to enforce. So this is kind of gives you a, a visual of where that plastic is coming from, where it's going. You know, it comes uh, inland, run, uh, inland uh, runoff and storm water. Uh, treated, treated water, wastewater, uh, waste treating, uh, treating wastewater, they cannot capture and filter out microplastics. Um, beach shore communities, we have a lot of people along the Jersey Shore every summer eating food at the, uh, at the food stands, using single-use plastic products to eat their food and drink their drinks. Uh, hopefully, they're all disposing of it properly, but how many times have you walked by a, a filled a trash container with the trash just falling out of it. Um, unless that trash is managed properly, all those things can end up in the, on the beach or in the water. Um, marine activities. Um, and it, it, you know, the thing is said at the top, you see airborne, atmospheric suspension and, de and de uh, deposition. This was a recent report that some scientists are finding microplastics in the air. So that means that those microplastics, when you get a rainstorm, get food, uh, fed back onto the, onto the planet. So you wonder how much plastic can really end up in the river. Well, I lived in Cranford, New Jersey for 41 years and I lived a mile away from the Rollway River. And twice a year, um, we would have a river cleanup. And this is what we found in the Rollway River a mile from my house. And this experience is probably the one experience that got my blood boiling and, and got me to say that I, I've got to try to do something to try to prevent this. And this is twice a year we would find gather, uh, plastic products and bottles and styrofoam and you know tires and soccer balls just laying in the river or on the side of the river. So this, this inspired me to try to do more. Um, clean Ocean Action, great organization based in New Jersey, and their goal is to clean up the waters, the waterways and rivers, bays, oceans along the Jersey coast. And over 35 years, they've held these, what they call a beach sweep. And over the 35 years, they, they've collected 7.4 million pieces of debris. So how's all this impacting wildlife? Well, I'm a wildlife photographer, as well as a landscape photographer. So these are a few photos I took to kind of illustrate how, wild, how, how seabirds um, get their food and how they behave. Uh, the picture on the upper left is the black skimmer. And black skimmers 
do exactly what their name says. They fly along the ocean, they skim along the top of the ocean to get their food. Then they bring it back when they're having a, when they have chicks to feed, they bring it back to give to their chicks. The photo on the bottom is a black skimmer chick tossing a piece of plastic up in the air. Now thinking it's food, it's very possible that that bird ate that piece of plastic. I don't recall what the end result was after I took the picture, because quite frankly, I don't think I knew I had a picture of the bird flipping the plastic. Another illustration, waved albatrosses from the Galapagos Islands. They feed on squid, surface fish, crustaceans, usually on the, on the ocean surface, uh, far out to sea. So the wave albatross goes out, gets the fish, that puts the fish, the fish ends up in their stomach and they come back and they open their mouth and the chick puts the, be her, the chick's beak in, into the mouth and the parent regurgitates that food to feed the chick. Sounds delightful. I know I'm glad humans don't do that. But this is how they, this is how they feed. So what happens if a bird while it's out to sea trying to find squid surface fish and crustaceans ends up picking up a piece of plastic. They don't know the difference. So what happens is they get filled with plastic and end up dying. Now these are photos of dead birds that have decayed to the point where you could see what was inside their stomach. And as you can see, there are a number of plastic elements that these birds thought were food and tried to eat. Um, plastic bags in, in, in the ocean also, uh, you know, sea turtles, um, all kinds of mammals, they don't know the difference between a piece of plastic and a piece of food. The number of seabirds dying as a result of plastics in cur is currently estimated to be 1 million a year. And plastic bags are among the most common source of, me of marine debris. Another problem plastic item is the, uh, the uh, the six pack ring. Um, they tend to, if the, they're in the ocean, the birds will try to feed on them. They get stuck. Um, they get stuck in the ring and they have a hard time getting it off and they don't have hands like we do. So once that ring is on there, it may be on there forever. In 1987, the Associated Press reported that as many as 1 million seabirds and 100,000 marine mammals were killed every year by six pack rings. So this is what the six pack ring looks like. I'm sure you've all picked these up at the store as, as I have. Um, if you do have a six pack ring that, on a product, the one thing you can do to try to minimize this problem is to cut the, the six pack ring up. So there is no way that a bird can get stuck in the, uh, in, it's inside at one of, those, uh, one of those sections. So let's focus on two items. Plastic bottles and bags, oh my, they are scary. Let's look at plastic water bottles. Plastic water was introduced, I guess in the 70s, they started with plastic water bottles, you know, selling water. And the, you know, the, the water companies would market it as spring water. You would see the spring water coming down, a, a beautiful clear spring, and you thought you were getting this great water. Well, bottled water, most a lot of it, can be filtered water, not necessarily spring water. So what does it take to make a bottle of water? Well, it takes a quarter of an, uh, a liter of oil and it takes three bottles of water. The production of bottled water uses 17 million. If somebody's got their speakers on, somebody has to mute. Thank you. The production of bottled water uses 17 million barrels of oil, enough to fuel 1 million cars a year. In the United States, uh, new PT, PET bottles contain only 7% recycled content. So I had always thought I recycle my bottle, it gets made into a new bottle, not necessarily. Single use plastic bags. Americans use 365 plastic bags per year per person. Plastic bag usage in New Jersey was calculated to be 4.4 billion annually. The scary thing is that the recycling rate for plastic bags, sacks and wraps was only 10% in 2018. 
So that means 90% of that 4.4 billion bags used annually is ending up either in the environment or in a landfill. Now, be it, just, I, want, I think I said this earlier, plastic bags should not be included in your plastic recycling. So don't put plastic uh, container, you know, your bottles in a plastic bag and then put the bag in your recycling barrel. But all, all it will do is, is, is gum up the works down the road. Now you do have an option for getting rid of these plastic bags. Um, ShopRite and a number of other supermarkets, including Target, have these plastic bag recycling containers. This is, this is more of a give back program as opposed to a traditional recycling program. So if you're using plastic bags, save them up and you get a full bag of plastic bags, bring it back and put it in this container and they will take them back and, and reproduce them into other products. So you might say, I recycle my plastic waste. What else can I do? Well, there are a few things we can do. First, I wanna show what some very smart people are doing about clean, trying to clean up the mess in the ocean. So Jenny is a 800 meter long floating barrier, which we tow through the water. The barrier is three meters deep in the water. It's completely open at the bottom, which is important because it allows fish to escape. And it has flotation along the top, which helps it to keep its shape. And it's connected at each end to one of these vessels, the one that I'm standing on here, and also the vessel that you can see behind me. And those vessels are Oh, are moving ahead at a very slow speed. It's about one and a half knots, which is less than two miles an hour. As we move through the plastic and through the water, then you get a natural flow of water caused by that, that movement. And the, the plastic is carried along those two barriers, which we call wings uh, on each side. And it's transported to a, to a central area. And there's a, a collection area, which we call the retention zone in, in the middle of that U shape. So all of the plastic flows along, it flows into that retention zone. And that enables us after a certain time, maybe once a week, to, to bring the two vessels together, hand one wing of Jenny to the other vessel so they're holding both, and the other vessel can go around to the back of the system uh, and pick up the retention zone, which has all the plastic inside. Then we take the plastic from the retention zone, empty it all out onto the deck. We separate it into different materials according to different recycling streams. We package it up and we take it back onto shore, and then we can send it for recycle. So you can see that uh, it's quite an effort to try to clean up uh, a pretty big problem. Um, the same organization, Ocean Cleanup, also has technology for river cleanup. As I indicated, a lot of the plastic that ends up in the ocean starts in a river. And as the rivers empty into the ocean, that's where an ideal spot to start collecting the plastics before they enter the ocean. And this is the technology, a couple of photos to show the technology they're using for that situation. So here's the, here's the mantra, reuse, reduce, recycle. Um, these are the three strategies we can use to try to reduce the amount of plastics in our environment. Um, so I encourage you, even though some of these numbers were a little discouraging that some of the plastic we recycle ends up in a landfill anyways, keep recycling. Uh, according to the Somerset County uh, Recycling Department, I talked to them about a month ago, and they tell me that the plastic recycling market is getting stronger. Uh, recycling plastic market is expected to grow by 8.5% between over the next five years. Recycling plastic bottles, or recycled plastic bottles are being used to produce all kinds of products, such as print ink cartridges, fence posts, and roofing tiles, just to name a few. The one thing very important that you can do is know what you can and what you cannot be in, in recycle in your recycling bins. Um, not all communities have the same guidelines. I came from Union County and I recycled things a certain way. And when I came here, I continued doing that. And I ended up putting things in the recycling bins that were not supposed to be there. So it's very important that you 
take a look at the how-to guide, which is provided by the uh, Somerset County Recycling Department. It's available on their website. It tells you what you can and what you cannot recycle. I encourage you to read this and, and follow these guidelines to the T. Um, you can, if, you, if you're an app person, you want an app for everything, um, you can download the Recycle Coach. It's an app that will, um, you can zero into Somerset County and it'll give you schedules. It'll tell you what you can and cannot cycle. So recycle this. So this is another um, resource that you have to help you be a smarter recycler. Don't be a wish cycler. I was a wish cycler. I put everything I could in my recycling containers, even those, uh, those plastic pots that had the number five on it. Um, so it don't put something in there that with the hope that maybe it'll get recycled. Make sure you're putting the things in there that are accepted and taking the things out that are not. Um, again, I thank the men's club. I approached the men's club uh, last August with the idea of doing a recycling, a cap, bottle cap recycling program. And I was, I was uh, thrilled with the, uh, the reception and the encouragement I got from uh, the members of the board. And um, so the first couple of months, we were using TerraCycle recycling boxes. There's a fee for that. Um, in order for them to recycle these products, they need a subsidy for the people sending in the plastic. And the men's club was willing to, to, to put that money out to help do that. But then Alan came along and uh, he said, I have a better solution. And now Alan is taking uh, all, our contain all our plastic bottle caps to New York. And New York is a great recycling uh, spot. So they're taking our plastics and recycling them. So again, thank you to Alan. Um, check with manufacturers. Ma a lot of manufacturers today are trying to you know, soften their um, environmental impact. And one way they're doing that is by taking back their products when, they're, when you're done with them. Oral-B and Crest have a program called Recycle on Us. And they'll take back toothbrushes, brush heads, toothpaste tubes, dental floor uh, containers, uh, anything to do with oral care. And you can save them up and then contact them and they'll send you a free shipping label and you can return them at no charge. What I've done is I've gotten together with a bunch of friends of mine and some of my family members and we put a little re, uh, Oral-B recycling group together. So everyone is saving up these items and then I collect them all. So the boxes will get filled a lot quicker and then I will return them back to the recycler. So if you wanna get involved with something like this, get together with your family and friends, have one person be the collector and collect those as much as you can and then ship it back. Um, on, if you print out, if you go to the uh, presentation on my website, uh, the link at the bottom, or I'll be recycling, is a link that will bring you to the website that explains the program. And as far as the um, the smoke alarms, yes, it's true that now New Jersey allows you to put these in the trash. But again, it's re it's plastic, and the trash is really not the best place to put it. I, I strongly encourage you to contact the manufacturer of the smoke alarm you have when it's done. They are obligated by law to take these back. Reduce. To me, this is the star of the program. Uh, it's nice to recycle, but reducing your buying of these types of plastics is what's going to try to hopefully get us out of this mess. So restrictions on plastic bags. The New Jersey was, uh, uh, I think, did the right thing with passing legislation to eliminate um, plastic bags. Um, that's going to take place in May of 2022. Um, so, you know, you don't have to wait until May to start using reusable bags. I've been using reusable bags since, uh, I guess, about the last 12 years. It's not that hard. I know people don't like change. They've been doing going to the store, putting their stuff in plastic bags, and uh, it's hard to change. And, you know, when something is taking away, you know, what you see as a convenience is taken away from you. But using reusable bags, once you do it for a couple of weeks, it becomes an, whole, an old habit. I encourage you to get the uh, vinyl type bags. They come in vi a number of materials, vinyl uh, and cloth bags. I find the cloth bags tend to fold in and don't stay upright, so it's a little more challenging putting product in the, uh, in, the paper, in, the, in the fabric bags at the uh, checkout counter. 
but the vinyl bags tend to stay up and open a lot easier and it's a lot easier to pack them. Uh, so I would encourage you to start buying these bags and or some some a lot of companies will give them for free. A lot of uh, charities will give them for free if you do a donation. I select the sooner you start, that's the less plastic we're putting in the environment. You can also buy reusable bags to, to you know, put your fruit and vegetables in. Um, I have a, a bags like these I've been using for the last two years. Um, you can put them in the wash. Um, now you, you will still have those plastic bags available to put your fruit and vegetable in. But my hope is that if you see an op, another solution that does not include plastic, that you will take advantage of it. Just say no. I used to get crazy. I'd go into a, a store to buy a, a container of milk and the, the clerk would put it in a plastic bag. Do you really need a plastic bag to carry a container that has a handle on it? Probably not. So just say no. If you're, car if you're buying one or two items that you can carry out with your hands, you don't need a bag for it. So just say no bag, please. Mm -hmm. Same with straws. Mm -hmm. Go to a restaurant. If you don't want to use a straw, just say no straw, please. Um, there is actually the law I went into effect as of November 4th that food service businesses are supposed to ask you uh, only give plastic straws out if you request them as a customer. Uh, I went to a restaurant recently who gave me a straw without me asking. So these restaurants need to catch up with this particular law. So I would suggest that if you want to go with the no straw deal and at your restaurant, just let your restaurant know, uh, you know, remind them of this law if they give you a plastic straw without you asking for it. You know, you can buy paper straws. We grew up with paper straws. We didn't have plastic straws when we were younger. Uh, my favorite straw was the flavor straw. Those were great, strawberry and chocolate. Um, they make bamboo straws. I have steel, stainless steel straws. So if I think I need a straw to drink something, I use a stainless steel and it comes with a brush to clean it out. Just reusable keeps all that plastic out of the waste stream. Your pure water, we talked about how much it costs and how much material and, and mm. energy goes into creating uh, bottles of water. Um, but many of the brands are just filtered water. You can filter your own water at home. Uh, the plastic bottles also may cause health problems. Whatever you do, if you're gonna have plastic bottled water or plastic, you know, bottled water in plastic, don't leave them in a hot car. Because if those bottles heat up, the chemicals in the plastic can leach into the, into the water. Um, so let's take a look, bottled water versus filter your own water. On a monthly basis, uh, bottled water is gonna cost you $31.95 a month. Uh, if you use filtered water, your cost is $2.43. So there's definitely a savings uh, in using, doing your own filtered water. A water pitcher up front would cost you anywhere from 15 to $35. But after that, your only cost is really the cost of the filters. Um, so filtered water, I use Brita uh, filters. Um, there's another uh, brand called Aquagear. And I understand that it filters out even more than the Brita filters do. Um, one of our relatives is in a, an area where the uh, water is uh, compromised with chemicals, and this is the filter that they're using. So you can get them in bottles, you can get them in dispensers and, and, and different types of uh, configurations. And the beauty about this is the filters are actually recyclable. Uh, Brita will, uh, once you save up about five pounds of filters, contact Brita, they will send you a, 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 a free shipping label, it doesn't cost you a cent. Put the, put the uh, pack the uh, filters in a box, put the label on, bring it to a UPS store, and they'll take it back and recycle it. If you're determined to have bottled water, consider having a big uh, jug of water you know, re and renew a subscription. Have it delivered to your home and have the, if you have a location in your spot to put one of these uh, dispensers, this is a lot cheaper, um, 46 cents for bottled water versus 10 cents for a jug of, of water. And the other beauty about this is that these big jugs are returned to the uh, supplier and they're reused. So these don't end up in the waste stream. Get yourself a reusable water bottle. This is what I do. I have filter water bottle, I have a water filter, and then I have a bottle that I take to the gym or take in the car when I'm driving. Um, they come in all kinds of materials. They come in stainless steel, aluminum, mm -hmm. plastic. 
If you're going to get plastic, make sure it's BPA free. Um, some of the earlier water um, bottles like this were made with uh, plastics that contain BPA, and those uh, that's a chemical that could be harmful to your health. Uh, single cup coffee makers, my pet peeve, but I know a lot of people love these things. They're convenient, um, they're easy to use, um, but again, 500 years for these to decompose, and of course we all know that they never really do decompose. And the U.S. Has, has, is estimated to use 20 billion of these a year. Um, there's, there's our, there are alternatives. So I have a drip coffee pot that I love. I, I'd rather have my coffee from a drip pot. But if, you're, if you like these Keurig uh, systems, there are compostable coffee, co coffee pots. So these are pods that you can use like you do with the plastic, but they'll decompose in the, uh, in the uh, environment. You can all use, also get reusable K-cups. You buy a bag of coffee, you put the coffee in the reusable cup and just wash it out and use it again. Think green when making a purchase. Um, let's take a quick look at the three primary packaging materials we have. Aluminum, 50% recycling rate and using recycled aluminum to make a new aluminum can saves 95% of the energy. Glass, you can recycle glass forever. Um, but recently I heard from uh, New York Recycling Organization that there's not a strong market for glass because it's a lot more difficult to handle. Uh, number one, plastic. Those are the plastic that you, they use in water bottles. Um, that price is increasing. So the, the good news is that more of those will probably be used for recycling and less will end up in the landfill. Um, but our recycling rate is at 27.9% now. That number needs to go up. So when you're shopping for soda or beer, think about what's the, what is it packaged in? You buy a six pack with, that's packaged with uh, these, these uh, plastic rings, you have a problem getting rid of those plastic rings and they can cause a problem. The worst combination in my opinion are plastic bottles with plastic held together by a plastic ring. There's nothing positive about that. So consider buying your soda and beer in aluminum cans packed in a cardboard box. The aluminum is very recyclable, as is the cardboard. There's other products, and, and I'm finding that more and more products are coming out to deal with the plastic issue. Um, I have, I used to buy soap in, a, in you know, liquid soap that I'd put by my sink and pump it out, but you think liquid soap in a plastic container with a plastic um, pump that is not recyclable or a bar of soap that comes in a cardboard container that is recyclable. Even shampoo today is available in bar soap. I recently bought these uh, from the Earthling company. I bought a, a, a bar of soap and a bar of conditioner and you just rub it on your head and it suds up and you wash your hair and it's just as good as the soap, the soap that you get in a plastic container. So this totally eliminates any plastic from your shampoo. Toothbrushes, we love our plastic toothbrushes and we like our power toothbrushes as well. But consider using a bamboo toothbrush. The bamboo toothbrushes are biodegradable and bamboo is a very, very renewable resource. Think about when you buy products, you know, if there's plastic content in there, by buying that product, you're increasing the market value of that material. Um, the Ocean Plastics uh, by Hippo Sack, um, they make plastic bags that are made from that, all that ocean plastic that you saw being dumped out on the deck of that ship. You can get yoga mats, you can get clothes, you can get sneakers, you can get comforters, you can get green toys. There are endless number of products that are now using recycled plastics in their material. So if you can identify that, use, I'm not saying to buy something just because it has recycled plastics, but if you have a choice between two products and one contains, is, it could help the environment, you may wanna consider that in your decision. So to wrap, to put a little bow on this, again, we have a big problem with, the, uh, with plastics in our environment. Reducing the use of plastic is the number one strategy. Reusing materials, recycling, keep it up. 
recovery. Um, not too not too crazy about burning plastics, but that's a one way that we're getting rid of plastics today. And of course, landfills, which we are appears in New Jersey, are running out of space. So I want to close with uh, before I run my my little photo show for you. Um, breaking news: thirty minutes before I came on to do this presentation. I got an email from one of the ocean conservation organizations that a recycled content bill has just passed the New Jersey State and Assembly, Senate and Assembly. And the bill would require increasing post-consumer recycled content in a variety of packaging products. So that's only going to do more on increasing the value of recycled plastics, hopefully keeping more of them, more of that material out of the landfill and out of the environment. Uh, and last pitch, this might be a great idea for the men's club to get to get a group together to go volunteer. Raritan Headwaters has an annual stream cleanup. The next date is April 23rd. And Clean Ocean Action has two sweet beach sweeps a year. The next one is scheduled for April 9th of 2022. It would be a great field trip for the men's club. So I am going to close with a little saying. Um, yeah, sustainable living is, is becoming more and more important today than ever. And I, I like the saying of one of my heroes, Jane Goodall, and she says, what you do makes a difference. And you have to decide what kind of difference you want to make. Um, we got to this situation, one consumer at a time, we can get out of it the same way. I'm going to close and hopefully give you a little bit of an uplift after that a little disturbing presentation. Um, so this is a, a, some of the images that I've taken over the last 20 years um, of some of the beautiful landscapes I've visited, as well as some of the wildlife that I've had the pleasure to uh, be close to. So we'll close with that.
Dave, Dave, before you go, are there any questions? Yeah, I'd like to make a statement. I just came from ShopRite today. It's amazing when you go in there, they'll put one item in a plastic bag and you walk out with 15 plastic bags. You go to Trader Joe's, they give you double uh, paper bags that are recycled. You go to Costco, they don't even give you a paper bag. So somebody has to get on ShopRite's rear end and tell them they gotta cut this crap out. Who saying this? Well, I think as soon as the law takes effect, uh, they're going to not have any paper bags or plastic bags unless you're going to pay for them. I think what they'll probably do is offer um, reusable plastic bags. And hopefully people will do exactly that and reuse them. The, the township has 2,500 recyclable bags, which they purchased. And we were giving out some at the food bank collection in December. Um, we can get more. I gave some out also at Souls for Souls, but then I have about 25 more here, or maybe a few more. So we, the town still has some left. And uh, if you donated to the food bank, you got a, uh, a bag from the men's club from Canal Walk. If it right. was $30 or more. Jay, I think you had your hand up. Yeah, you know, just a comment and a, and a question. It's a mind-boggling David presentation with details and uh, uh, such meticulous presentation. Uh, your photography has been awesome. And, you know, I really salute you for your passion. And uh, I'm also aware about the, the, the Glenn project that has been going on and has been even touched the whole you know, uh, world to that point. But I was wondering, David, are there any other similar projects those are going on in terms of cleaning up the pollution in the oceans? Um, not, that, not that I'm, I'm sure there are. I know there's a lot of companies a lot, or a lot of inventors trying to figure out ways to do this. Um, I think the one that I showed is probably the most notable, um, but there are you know, this, there's a lot of people who have this passion and, and I'm sure there are more than just this one group that are, are trying to find a solution. But, you know, as I said, you know, the, 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 key, the key is not to clean it up. The key is to prevent it in the first place. And that's where change, everyone changing their, their ha shopping habits, their behavior, um, the products they use, that's what's gonna be needed. And the important thing about all this you know, we're, 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 we're up there in years, but we have children and grandchildren. And if we can pass this, this passion on to our grandchildren and children, because they're the ones who are gonna have to live in this world with all that stuff in it. You know, so we have to instill in a sense of sustainable living in our family members as well. And, and that's what we can do as, as grandparents and uh, elders in the community. Yeah, David, you know, it's great that the prevention is the best thing, but the damage has already been done. And I think we, as uh, humans of this planet, have to be really sensitive to it and, and be, be very, you know, uh, careful about what we are doing. Agreed. Agreed. Any David, other questions? thank you. Thank you. No questions, but just a comment. Thank you for an incredibly well-presented, informative, and very sensitive program. Much appreciated. Thank you so much. Thanks for the comment. I appreciate it. My I, was a little, I was a little nervous about this because I normally talk about photography. So I was uh, way out of my league well, with this, with this subject. And, uh, you, you, did, know. you did an incredible job, man. Thank very you. informative. Yep. So informative. Mahesh, go ahead. Hey, thank David, you. thank you for sharing the pictures. They were gorgeous. But um, David, Mary, this Mary was listening in on some of the, and she brought it. When she's at ShopRite, she asks them not to use, not to bag so many things separately. Also, not for Aldi, they tend not to give you bags, although they do make their, their crates just like Costco, the cardboard crates that they write in, they become available for you to take with your mm -hmm. groceries. Um, so that's another store that's a good place that's going this direction. 
Thank you. Please wait until you're recognized, Mahesh. Hi, uh, David. This Hi. was an amazing uh, presentation which you have done. I am aware about some of the bad habits I might have had, and I'm going to try and improve that. And I think you have made a great impact upon us. And I also suggest to you that this presentation should be done to various clubs in our, uh, our, our, our community. And I think it will make a lot of difference. I, I, I would be happy to do this anywhere, anytime. And I would really like to invite you at our uh, uh, Indo-American club. And well, I, I'm, I'm there, just tell me when. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. David, thank you very much. It was enlightening and it was really entertaining. Thank you. Thank you, Vincent. Thank Thanks you, for David. asking me to do it, Vince. My thank pleasure. You. All right, thank, thank you. David. Thank you, David. Gary Grossman. Absolutely fantastic. So informative, just so great. Just uh, really opened our eyes to quite a few things, David. And yeah. thank you profusely. Thanks. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Howard. You have to unmute yourself, please. Uh, first of all, I think it was an unbelievable presentation. It's probably one of the best we had in men's club. The shame of it is that most of the community did not hear it. Somehow, this message should get across to the community. Again, thank you for the, it was an unbelievable presentation. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions? The only thing I would add is the good news is we did have a lot of people on Zoom um, and we had a number of people um, on YouTube and in the recording, I'll be editing the recording, it'll be available uh, on our YouTube site and, all we, and I'll communicate that to the community so other people may be able to log in and, and listen. Super, thank you, Bruce. Yes, thank I think you. Uh, you can put down that it's the uh, seventh wonder of the world. So. Uh, Mm -hmm. You can uh, have that. Any other questions, comments? Dave, on behalf of the men's club, I thought it was an excellent presentation, very mm -hmm. informative and uh, educational. And uh, I hope it has motivated other people besides the ones here that we can speak to, to become more uh, aware of the products that they're using and to recycle even more than we have been doing in the past.